Hey guys, I have here a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate server rack battery from SOK. These batteries are sold by and designed in conjunction with Current Connected. I've been waiting for a few months for these and I'm super excited that they are finally here. We've got one, two, three, four of these server rack batteries. They all arrived nicely bundled on a single pallet. Today's video is going to be a review and a teardown of this battery. Then over the next several weeks, we're going to build out a complete off-grid system with four of these batteries and a pair of two MPP Solar LV6548 inverters. I did end up ordering a second LV6548 approximately a month ago and it is still on uh, a pre-order, back order, whatever you want to call it. So I'm hoping it ships here soon. But in the meantime, we have our batteries here to get started. So taking a look at the front of our battery, it does have some similar characteristics to other server rack batteries on the market. Starting on the bottom left here, we have a 125 amp DC rated circuit breaker. This is Chint brand, model number CB-125A. Moving to the right hand side here, we have an on off LED. We have a reset button, a run LED, an alarm LED, a four LED SOC or state of charge indicator, a series of DIP switches for setting addressing information. The DCT port is a dry contact relay. We have uh, RS45A is for communications to your inverter. We have a CAN port that's for communications to your inverter. We have an RS-232, it's for communications to your computer. And we have RS-45 B and C. And these two are used for chaining multiple batteries together so the batteries can communicate with one another. Also on the right hand side, we have a display. So if we push the menu button, you see it turns on. So we can see analog info. So it looks like we have four temperature sensors and then two maybe on the BMS itself. We can actually see the voltage of all 16 cells in this battery. Uh, so you can use the down button to cycle through them. So the center has characteristics of the battery. It's a 100 amp hour battery, which is 5.120 kilowatt hours. Charge voltage rating, and it's a max continuous charge and discharge of 100 amp or 1C. So one thing that makes this battery rather unique are these very large terminals. And these terminals look like they have a lot of mass to them. So you can fit some pretty heavy gauge wire, some pretty thick lugs on these terminals. And we have a pair of them. So we have two positives and two negatives. So one thing to note with SOK and Current Connected is the level of quality control you get. So each one of these batteries came with an individualized inspection report. So we can see they checked the appearance, they checked the factory battery voltage, internal resistance, the factory capacity. So they actually tested this battery at 103.8 amp hours. It's stamped as passed and it looks like two different people had signed off on it. So, so I got four batteries and I got four individual battery inspection reports. Uh, so I'm working on testing one of the SOK batteries in a separate room. You can see we're at 37.2 amps so far and it's going down to my Batrium shunt and a 1500 watt inverter. And then rather than wasting all that power, I'm using my Ames charger to charge up my home battery bank. All right, so the discharge test just concluded. We came in at 103 amp hours. And according to the inspection report for this particular battery, they tested it at uh, 106 amp hours. Uh, so we didn't match their test value. However, we did exceed the rated capacity of 100 amp hours. So we are still good there. So the bottom of this steel lid has this epoxy board insulator. I think it's epoxy board. So here's our first look at the inside of this battery. Guys, look at this. And one big thing this company advertises is the ability to repair and disassemble this battery. Uh, so you see the cells are all bolted together. There is no laser welding and they should all be easily removable. So looking at our main positive and negative cabling here, these wires do not have any ratings printed on them. However, they do look like seven gauge wire. They are definitely not number six and they do look pretty much identical to this piece of number seven I have from another battery. And they are going straight down here to the BMS, which we will pull out and take a look at separately. But one thing I did notice over here is this wire is bent at quite a sharp bend and I'm not sure why they didn't just you know, put the lug out a little bit. It looks like the lug rotated as they were tightening it down. So all of the balance leads are individually numbered. We can see this is B1 and then we have B3. So B2 is over here. Um, the balance leads are all going down this single channel here back to a large bundle over here. They are nicely bundled within this channel. We see we have a temperature sensor here. There's a second temperature sensor here. There's a third one over here and there is a fourth one down here. So the top part, the wires are nicely bundled as well. They do look kind of messy once you get up here. They're just kind of like scrunched down in there, but uh, I suppose that's okay. 
This is a 48 volt battery, which does start getting a bit, uh, I don't want to say it's dangerous, but you have to be mindful of what you're doing. Um, so like, I don't want to accidentally put my hand across these two posts. I would probably get hurt from that. So the first thing I'm going to do before I proceed any further, uh, first of all, I am wearing a pair of safety glasses. But the first thing I'm going to do is remove this series connection here. That way this is split into two 24 volt battery packs instead of one larger 48 volt battery pack. Guys, these bus bars look very familiar. These are pretty much the same or similar as I used in my EVE 230 and 280 amp hour build in that they are compressed at both ends with heat shrink in the middle and they are flexible. So all of these bus bars, they are made of many, many layers of copper squeezed together. And uh, so if any of these batteries were to expand or contract to reduce the force that would get put on these studs. So I am glad to see that these are some very high quality bus bars. All right, so I've removed the main positive conductor. I've also loosened up and removed all of these zip ties. You can see this is quite a spaghetti nest of wires. So I see there are two Phillips screws on the left and two Phillips screws in the right holding this entire block down. All right, so there's our BMS. Take off this BMS. We're gonna take off this BMS panel and just set it aside for right now. And it looks like we can slide out one of these battery modules very easily here. Okay, there we go. Uh, so they have this steel cage built the whole way around this battery. And it's actually secured on both sides with a series of Phillips screws there at the bottom. The way it looks here is once you remove these screws, this top cage looks like it lifts right off and the batteries are sitting on this bottom plate here. So I don't want to take that apart because that means I need to remove all of these balance leads since this top bar will come up with it. Uh, but that could be done fairly easily should you need to replace a cell. And uh, this does come with a 10 year warranty. So hopefully you are not needing to service this battery. However, the fact that it's built with serviceability in mind is very, very cool in my opinion. But yeah, looking closer at this battery pack, we can see these cells are all separated with a plastic separator. And there is a piece of rigid plastic on both ends here between the metal. So this metal is not actually in contact with any of the cells directly. These are the same GFB cells we are familiar with. 0ALCBA091000 D. And then it just fits in the case here next to the other. And there are two larger side supports here that this is going to screw down into. All right, so taking a look at our BMS board, the balance leads come down to the top right location. This is the same or very similar to what is used in the Jacoper battery. Um, so we've got ribbon cables that come down to the bottom display board, a connector that goes to the interface for the RS-45 and RS-232. We've got a positive power lead. This is the power lead for the actual BMS itself. We've got the main negative comes to the top of the BMS where it's labeled B minus and it exits the battery on the P minus here again with the tight wire bending. I don't know what's up with that, but anyway, the pair of wires comes out and then it goes to the main negative terminal. Uh, the positive comes into the circuit breaker here. It's adjoined with the positive for the BMS goes through the circuit breaker and then it goes straight up to the main positive terminals. Uh, not a whole lot to see. I'm not going to take this BMS out. I've shown what these BMSs look like in some other videos. So as I'm putting this back together, I did rotate these main negative leads to the left to relieve the tension that was being put on them by that sharp bend. I did check with Current Connected on this and they did agree that they should not have been put in the way they were. Uh, so they're going to work with SOK to make sure that that is corrected going forward. But if yours are bent at a sharp angle like this, all you have to do is uh, Turn them to the left here and then retighten these bolts back down. And there is plenty of length left over to relieve that tension. All right, so the last thing we want to test before we go is that the low temperature charge protection works on this battery. I have no doubts whatsoever that it will work. However, this seems to be the test you guys always want to see. So we've got the Ames charger here. I pulled out one temperature sensor at random. This is actually sensor number one. And I'm going to dip that in this glass of ice cubes and cold water. Then I'm going to pour some of this uh, orange rock salt in to help chill the water and see if we can get it to shut down. So we're at one degree below zero. I believe we have to hit five degrees below zero for this to shut down. That's typically what these are programmed for. All right, so as soon as it hit five degrees below zero, uh, you can see the charger shut down. It's showing zero amps in. 
This battery has a rating of 4,000 cycles at a 1C rate and a 100% depth of discharge or 7,000 cycles at a half C rate and a 80% depth of discharge. At 7,000 cycles, that is 19.2 years this battery is expected to last. Now, of course, both of those figures uh, bring the battery down to 80% state of health, and that's not saying you can't use it beyond 80% state of health, that's just typically how batteries are rated. So if you're cycling this at 100% depth of discharge, even after your 4,000 cycles, the battery will likely still work. It will just be at 80% of its rated capacity. And I've mentioned it already, but this comes with a 10 year warranty. Current Connected and SOK are working on getting this tested to UL standards. I believe uh, SOK is actually facilitating that test and they're using ETL Intertech to do the testing. I obviously can't speak on their behalf, but I do hear that it is going very, very well. Uh, so we'll look forward to some more information on that very soon. And Current Connected also did inform me that they just got a full container of these batteries in. So they are in stock and ready to ship. I'll leave a link down in the video description if you're interested in learning more or purchasing one. In the next video, we'll get the rack assembled and get all of these batteries put in. Uh, that video may be a week or two out yet. I'm hoping my LV6548 inverter ships soon. Anyway, if you have one of these batteries, please let me know what you think in the comment section of the video. Questions and general comments are always welcome as well. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.